Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and this is video number two on my Creality CR10 printer, and it's an update on some of the things I've been doing and uh, using it for. Thank you for all of the comments and suggestions, and many of those helped me. Some of it is conflicting information or duplication, but nevertheless, I read them all and I can't answer them all, but I appreciate it. And I implemented several of these suggestions. And uh, let's take a look now at what my Banggood Creality uh, printer has been doing. And it's running right now. So take a look. For those of you who are worried that I've given up my core video uh, information on Machine Shop, uh, don't worry. I'm getting back to it, and this is only supplementing it. Now, I have temporarily put my buggy whips in the bottom drawer, but they will be brought out again. Well, what the Creality printer is printing right now is foundry patterns. I'm not interested in doing decorative things and gothic skulls and stuff like that, but this is a foundry pattern, or half of it. It's a split pattern that will be made into little wheels that go on a belt sander and I'll be doing some machining on that next spring when the weather warms up in my farewell foundry but these patterns have draft on them that is they're tapered three degree draft so they will withdraw but let me uh, back up just a little bit from these for a minute and then I'm going to get back to these and some improvements in this particular model but it's printing away and that's about a six or seven hour print it's already been going about an hour and it's barely off the ground and as someone suggested and I could not agree more mushrooms grow faster than 3d printing at least the way I do it you know what, I changed my mind. I think I'll finish on these foundry patterns, even though it's a little bit out of sequence to some of the other things that I have done already. But this was done with Tinkercad. Notice the segments. Well, when I talked about that once before, Kevin, who I met on the internet, I'm not giving you him his last name yet, but he said, I do Fusion 360, and I can print or I can model anything you want. So within three hours he had sent me this pattern and notice the difference. This is Fusion 360. I have a, a fillet. See I hadn't learned yet how to place a fillet or for that matter a chamfer. So I said can you put fillets in here? And he said well yeah I can but that'll take an extra 10 seconds. So I said, well, take 30 seconds and put some on the outside. And it, while you're at it, put a little uh, countersink in there and put a, a boss so I can drill a set screw hole and put a hole on the backside so I can uh, put a, a, an alignment. So he did all of that for me. Thank you, Kevin. You're a genius. So he's supposed to do another one for me also that will not have a, uh, a boss because really don't need a boss on both sides but the problem I'm having and these are printed out as a in high quality I guess you would call it but even the original one that I did before I met Kevin so I can put that back together they lifted off of the bed even though I did have good adhesion but I think that there's just so much um, warpage or something and I'm not blaming that on, on adhesion. I'm getting a little wordy here, but here's the one by, by Kevin, and it's the same way with the brown and edge, brown and, brown and edge, brown and sharp. You, you, ruler, you can see that that does not lay flat, so I think I need to print that out at a lesser quality. And speaking of adhesion, I am presently using masking tape along with play school and like somebody told me it isn't the, the glue that is gluing it down so much it's allowing you to get it off because I had a couple I had to use DuPont blasting powder to get them off and then they uh, they got ruined well here's an example of it this is the first wheel that I printed out and I printed it out in real low 
resolution. And, uh, you know, it peeled apart getting it off there. And then Henry got a hold of it and he, he did uh, a little more damage to it. But there you can see the infill. But I like to print them out rough like that to start with because I like to think in three dimensions. That's what this really was all about for me. All right, enough on the wheels for now, but you can see this is going to be great for pattern making. And I already have taken six lessons on Fusion 360 from Paul McWhorton, I think is his name. And uh, he's, he's a great teacher. And, so I need to get a hold of Fusion 360. I'm not sure if I can use the free version, the free license, because, you know, is he going to cons uh, is Fusion Autodesk going to consider what I'm doing here commercial? I don't know. You tell me how I can get that license. Backing up to last week's, I think I already showed you the T-slot cleaner and, and the throat plate for the bandsaw and the South Bend tool gauge. And these are really like two-dimensional, so those are so easy to do compared to some of this other stuff. But what I wanted to do was, for this little steam engine, I wanted to make a base. Well, originally I wanted to make a foundry pattern, but forget the foundry pattern. I want to go right to a usable, and I did, printout that is permanent. So, so that's it. Now I did a couple samples and I changed some of the dimensions, did the dimensions. That's no good. I had, like I said, I've had a lot of failures. And getting back to that core box and this base, this half of a core box. Well, here's the core box with the support and the brim on it. But look what happens when it lifts off and how it tapered. I caught that and I stopped the print. But the same thing happened, that's the reason I'm showing you that, with, with this base on one that I made. Look at how that lifted off of the bed, the printer bed. Now it looks like a sled. Again, that's the support. I think you all know what support is. I stopped the print. But anyway, eventually I got usable base. And it's pretty heavy and sturdy. This one does not have any taper on it. I have this one tapered for two reasons. I don't know if you can tell that, but one reason was I originally thought I'd use it as a foundry pattern, but it just looks better to have a taper on there than it does if it's, if it's squared off. And I got better lugs on there, and the hole was printed right in, and of course the slot was printed right in. There are the screws that hold the little steam engine onto the base. Because for years, when my brother bought this at a flea market, it had no base. That was mounted on a, a boiler at one time till some kid blew up the boiler, I guess. So I had put it on this cheap plywood base that I made in five minutes or less, always with the thought that I was going to do something with it. Well, I finally have after five years, and I wish I would have used the red filament for this, because now I have a spool of red filament, but enough on the little steam engine. So what do you think of that? I like it. I'll have to admit, I do like it. We'll put that to rest. And in the 10 minutes since I started talking, there is no perceivable difference in that wheel. And I could print two of them at the same time, for that matter. Someone uh, told me that you can buy a bed plate that is, oh, I a print Z or something is the trade name that will allow you to peel it right off. They're kind of expensive. Give me your thoughts on those if you've ever used one of those. I think they're like fiberglass and you can flex them. Take it off and flex them to get your, your print off. But adhesion really probably is the number one problem I've had. The other problem I have is the just setting the distance from the nozzle to the bed. I do all four corners with a feeler gauge, piece of paper. Then I come into the middle and it's totally different than it is on the four corners. It does not seem that the glass plate is warped. I checked it with a brown and sharp. 
I checked the ro the rollers down the bottom and some of the rollers needed adjustment and I've done that but it's uh, still it seems like I spent so much time on leveling and so much time on adhesion more in fact than I spent on printing and then sometimes I go upstairs and take a nap and I come down in three hours and I got this so some things are discouraging about this I did not think there were that many variables I thought it was like a printer on your computer of a paper printer that you know it just did what you thought it would do but I thank Banggood again for this printer and donating it to me and with some of these people that are helping me out as sponsors I know that you don't like that but it allows us creators to do things we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. All right, let's go over to the other bench. I got more things to show you. I got all kinds of wheels turning in my head and ideas for projects coming up, so make sure you watch all of my videos. But the next thing I'm going to do, and I've already done the printout, is to make this dial indicator holder that will go in in a Loris type tool holder. Now this is actually usable as it, as it is right now with an indicator mounted on there, a small indicator. So that's what I'm going to talk about in the next video and furthermore I'm going to carry it even one step further and in a later video and again Kevin helped me with this. There's going to be a a dovetail. Look at there's a thread printed in. Just all kinds of, of neat things that, that I'm doing here that will be in upcoming videos. So, and, and this is the size indicator that it's going to hold. I'm, some of the stuff I don't want to spoil my thunder so I'm not showing you everything but this is what I'm going to do although since you won't be able to print it out depending on what equipment you have I'm going to make one out of aluminum in a video so that'll be a exercise and futility no not futility exercise and in, in machining and uh, milling so keep watching my videos leave some comments if you're so inclined or give me some thumbs down if you're so inclined because I'm sure been getting plenty of them and I don't know what I'm doing wrong but apparently plenty so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. And watch for that Logan series that's coming out on Vimeo. Go to Vimeo.com and look at my video courses for rent there. See you next time.